Hi, I'm Kenny Eats. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And today is Parents Day. Therefore, our message today will be about parents. And we've entitled our message today, Honor Your Parents. You're never too old to stop honoring your parents and your parents' parents. And if you're fortunate enough to have your parents' parents' parents, your great-grandparents, you're to honor those as well. You know, neither can you have a position too high that will exempt you from honoring your parents. Even if you were the president of the whole world, you're still required to honor your parents according to God's law. The Fifth Amendment, honor your parents, was not written specific to children, but rather it was given to the grown community of Israel who were first to obey the Ten Commandments and then they were to teach them also to their children. In our scripture reading today, a certain ruler questioned Jesus about inheriting eternal life. And we're going to take a look at how Jesus answered him. Turn with me, please, our scripture reading found in Luke chapter 18, verse 18 through 22. Now, a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And he said, all these things I have kept from my youth. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. The Bible stated that a certain ruler, it does not name this ruler, but only addresses the man's spiritual concern, what he came to Jesus concerned about. He came to Jesus and asked him, what shall I do? to inherit eternal life. And this was Jesus' reply. One, do not commit adultery. Two, do not murder. Three, do not steal. Four, do not bear false witness. And number five, honor your father and your mother. The ruler's concern was about his eternal soul, something we all should be concerned about. He wanted to be sure that he would inherit eternal life. I was working with a young lady several years ago, and one day I asked her, what do you suppose happens to us when we die? Her reply was, I don't know. I then asked her, if there's a possibility that eternity is forever, that when you die, eternity starts and it will last forever, and ever and ever. Don't you think that it might just be important to find out what happens to us once we die? She replied to me, no, I don't think so. She said something about people judging her because she lived with her boyfriend and did not want her grandmother, who's a Christian, to know about it. But make no mistake, we will all spend eternity in one place or the other. It does not matter whether you believe or you don't believe. It doesn't matter whether you're ready or you're not ready. It doesn't matter whether you want to or you do not want to. We will all spend eternity someplace. And there are only two choices. That's it, two choices. Either you spend eternity in blissfulness with Jesus, or you will spend eternity in torment in a lake of fire. There's no other choice. The ruler in our scripture reading today wanted to be sure that he would escape the eternal flames. 
So he went to the source to question, to inquire, and to find out exactly what he needed to do in order to be assured of a good eternity. So Jesus gave them a list of don'ts and a one must do. The must do is you must honor your father and your mother. This is not just some Old Testament forgotten law, something that has played out, something that is no longer required. It is still very relevant to us today. Paul said when quoted the law in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 through 3, children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. God promises a long life to those who honor their parents. Now, that is not to say that some who honor their parents have not died young, because they have. But it is best not to set limits or to test the hand of fate. For the scripture says, do not put the Lord thy God to the test. Besides that, when we honor our parents, we honor God. But someone might say, my parents do not deserve honor. You don't know what they have done to me. Well, that might be true. There are real hurts there are real scars on children that have been left behind by the hand of their own parents. But you know what? As Christians, we are required to forgive. And we are required to love even our enemies. We're to love those who hurt us, those who hate us, those who say all manner of evil against us, who plot against us. We're to forgive them. We're to pray for them. We are required to honor our parents. So here it is. I want to draw your attention to two points. One, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Two, I want to address the meaning of honor. So with our first point, let us turn to Romans chapter 5, verse 10. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. We were not all good people. We have all gone astray. We have all done some horrible and awful things against our God. We have betrayed him. We have let him down. We have forsaken him and we have committed spiritual adultery against him. But he chose to overlook all of our faults and all of our transgressions against him. And he chose to honor us by dying for us. And now he expects us to do the same to others. He could have said, it is too much. I refuse to pay that high of a price for them. Let them die for their own selves. Then what would we do? We would have no leg to stand on, so to speak. There would be no hope for us at all. Absolutely none. Paul looked at who he was formerly. And what he saw was not a pretty sight. This was the conclusion that he came to. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Paul looked and he saw an awful, wretched man with no hope of deliverance because it was the very same one that he had transgressed against who was the only one that could deliver him from the body of death. But then he got really excited because the same one, the same God that he had transgressed against was the very same one who would be his deliverer. And you know what? That is true for us as well. Jesus is the only one who can 
and will and has delivered us from our body of death. Jesus looked past her sins. He looked past her transgressions and he saw her need. And still, after all he saw, he loved us. He cared about us. And still, he died for us knowing that we would betray him still. Knowing that some would still hate him, would still plot against him, would still shake their fists in his face. Yet, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Even though we were vile, disgusting sinners, Jesus loved us and died for us because we are his loved, beloved creation. And now, all we have to do is to come to him and accept his free gift of life that he offers us free of charge, just come. Now, this word honor in the Hebrew, the original Hebrew, it means to be heavy, as in physically heavy or to make heavy. In other words, it is not because of what someone has done, but rather because you chose to make it so. Just like we were unlovable, but Jesus chose to love us anyway. And therefore, he died for us so that we might live. And then in the Greek, this word honor, it means the worth one ascribes to a person that is satisfaction, compensation, evaluation, and honor. So it is the worth that is ascribed to a person or the value that we credit to a person or we assign to a person as to a cause or a source. In other words, we attribute or impute honor, not because they're deserving or because they're worthy of it or that they're even honorable in our eyes, but because they were made in the image of Almighty God, we impute honor to them. I know it's a hard teaching, but it was the God of all creation and the judge of the living and the dead, the one who we will have to give an account to, who said, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That is a very frightening statement in the light of eternity. So let me break it down for you. If you refuse to forgive people, including your parents, no matter what they have done to you, God will refuse to forgive you, no matter how much you ask him. And let me just add this, nothing that has been done to you or against you is worth holding someone up for it and then spend eternity in hell. It's just not worth it. Here's another truth. That same person who you feel that you just cannot or you're just not able to forgive, well, they themselves may have repented. They may have come to Jesus and asked for forgiveness and have received forgiveness from God. And you know what? They will spend eternity with them while you hold on to your hurts. Valid hurts indeed, yes. But you will still spend eternity in the lake of fire because you refuse to forgive, because you refuse to honor your parents. That is not me. That's not my saying. That is the giver of life, the master, who said that. For further clarification on what I just said or for more information, please see Matthew chapter 6, verse 15. So the bottom line is this. If Jesus, who is holy and just and righteous, can and did do all of that for us because he chose to do it, not because he had to do it, but because he chose to do it, then we, 
have no excuse. They say that money changes everything. Well, let me let you in on a well hidden or a well kept secret. Prayer changes everything and prayer changes everything for the better. Understand this, it is difficult nigh on to impossible to honor God if you do not first honor your parents. And maybe that's why communism, which say there is no God, works hard to break the bond between parents and children. They knew that dishonoring parents is the first step to breaking down the family. When the family unit breaks down, chaos ensues. Children are taught not to honor their parents, but rather to honor government, and then government becomes God. This is happening right now when the school system believes that they have more right over children and more right to decide what is right for them and what is best for them. And government is partnering with them by weaponizing the DOJ to intimidate passionate parents who refuse to have their children indoctrinated. The usurping of children's allegiance from their parents is a real thing. The pandemic opened the eyes of concerned parents to the radical ideologies that are being taught in schools that range from gender redefinition and self-election the rewriting of history to critical race theory. Such indoctrination creates a negative impact on children and spill over into everyday society, causing real life issues. According to discovery.org, and I quote, students as young as age five are not only taught that their gender is open to their own interpretation and selection, but they are also encouraged to self-select the bathroom and the preferred pronouns they use, regardless of whether those match their biological sex." End of quote. This leads to confusion on the part of the children and breaks the trust bond between parents and child and removes the authority of the parent. Apparently, through much lies and deceit, schools have found a way for children to transition right there at school without the parent or legal guardian's consent or even knowing about it. They go as far as having two views of electronic student records. One, with only students given names, gender, etc and another which include conflicted name, gender, and preferred pronouns that is only visible to the school. These are irreversible, life-altering decisions that are made without the input or the knowledge of parents or their guardians. Not only that, but some schools remove the authority of parents by providing students access to Planned Parenthood clinics where they receive prescription hormones of the opposite sex, all unknown to parents, even if it's against the parents' wishes or their beliefs. Young girls are allowed to have abortions through the school system, and again, all unbeknownst to parents or legal guardians. Government does more harm to honoring the parent than is acceptable. Parents need to speak up and take back control of the life-altering decisions of their children. I want to leave you with a few ways of honoring your parents. First one, pray for your parents. Whether you feel that they're honorable or not, pray for your parents. Prayer changes everything for the better. Spend time with your parents even after you're grown and have your own family. Spend time, set aside some time to visit and spend quality time with your parents. Listen to their stories, listen to their memories of days gone by. Even if you've heard those stories thousands of times before, listen, ask their opinion and take their good advice. 
parents are wiser than you think. When they're aged, care for them. Attend to their needs. Let them know that you appreciate what you have done for them or, or what they have done for you. Don't rough them up or be short-tempered with them, but speak kindly, speak gently, speak positively to them and let them know that they are valued. So in conclusion, the Bible instructs us to honor our parents. And today, Parents Day, let us make a decision, a conscious decision to honor our parents. Also consider this, some people don't have parents, but wish they did. If your parents are alive, honor them so that it may go well with you. Now in closing, I wanna ask you, do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior? If you don't know Jesus, but you would like to know him, here's how you do it. All you have to do is to come. All you have to do is to ask. All you have to do is repeat this prayer after me. If you're ready to accept Jesus, here's how. Father, forgive me for I have sinned. I have not honored my parents. I have betrayed you. I have done all manner of evil against you. Forgive me. I am sorry and I'm asking you to help me to live a life of a Christian. Help me to honor my parents and to love them no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You now have a new life found in Christ Jesus. What you need to do is to buy a Bible or get your Bible off your shelf, dust it off and read it every single day. Highlight it, memorize it and find a Bible believing church, one who believes in righteousness and holiness who believes, thus saith the Lord, believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. Join that church, be discipled in that church. When Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is you should be doing. And he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joy of the Lord. I wanna say thank you so much for joining us. Blessings on all of the parents out there. Jesus loves you, we love you, I'm Kenny Yates, and this is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.